Hello everybody, Let's Over Life here, bringing you guys a brand new decor file. This time around it is my uh, Turbo Black Wings. Uh, I like to call them Assault Black Wings, but uh, <laughs> it'd be better if I just call them Black Wing Turbo or Turbo Black Wings, something like that. So, this deck is a lot of fun. It's uh, basically, I, I looked at Black Wings and how everybody plays it. Everybody's still trying to cling on to the old way of playing Black Wings, and that's being super slow, with a crap ton of back row to disrupt your opponent's plays and stuff. And honestly, I don't really like that build too much. I prefer just going into synchro plays every single turn and making it to where my opponent like really has to worry about what I'm doing because what I'm doing could easily destroy their entire board. And this deck is a lot of fun. It's really fast. It's completely different from how I've seen most other people play Black Wings, uh, which I think is due to people just wanting to stick to how the deck used to play and how it's how people think that it's supposed to be played. Like I sold this to a friend of mine, and he he was disgusted with it, and even more so when he saw that I destroyed his old version of Black Wings. <laughs> Anyways, so onto the deck profile before I go on a tangent. <laughs> kind of already did there, but oh well. So, first and foremost, three Chris to crack a dawn. This guy, he's a Bora, but however, a bit better. He's 1900, and he has 300 defense. You can only summon him once per turn through his own inherent special summoning, which is basically where if there's a black wing on the field aside from himself, you can special summon him from your hand. And once during each turn, he can't be destroyed by spell or trap effects, which means uh, Dark Hole won't work on him the first time. Torrential won't work on him, Bottomless won't work on him. There's a lot of cards out there that people play that just won't really hurt him. And then they gotta go and do it again. <laughs> and that's what I and that's one of the big things I really like about him, because you can normal summon your Shura and then special summon him. Now, speaking of Shura, I play three Shura. Honestly, if it weren't for the fact that there's a lot of stuff out there that still can enable you to get Sura's effect, I'd probably want to drop him to two because of all the pendulums. Now, the reason being is that Sura, he's lost a bit of power. Now, if you don't know what Sura does, basically if he kills monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can special summon one Blackwing monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck. Now, the issue with this is that pendulums don't go to the graveyard, which means it won't trigger Shura's effect, which really, really, really sucks and slows this deck down a bit whenever you're doing against pendulum decks. Now, that being said, though, if like they go into an Xyz or they summon out something that's not a uh, pendulum monster, you're able to kill it and get its effect off. And so, yeah, sure, he's not too great against the pendulum decks out there, but if you're doing against Monarchs, Cosmos, uh, Phantom Knights, pretty much every other deck out there that does not play Pendulums, he's still really, really good, and that's why I keep him at three. <laughs> Next up, three Bora to Spear. So this guy, he, he's uh, the guy that I referenced with Chris. Basically, what this guy does is whenever you control a, a uh, Blackwing monster, <laughs> sorry, I forgot their names for a second here. If you control a Blackwing monster, you can spell summon them out, and uh, yeah, it's really good. Also, he has Piercing. 1700 attack, not too bad. You just mainly use him for synchro fodder and stuff. And then he's not too bad for like just piercing and stuff. 1700 attacks, not very much of a joke sometimes. Although it really depends on what you're doing against. Next up, I play three Kalut, the Moon Shadow. Basically, what this guy does is he's kind of a mini honest. Whenever a Blackwing monster you control battles, you can send them from your hand to the graveyard to increase your Blackwing monster's attack power by 1400. You can do this multiple times in a turn, so if you have three Kalut, you can potentially increase your Blackwing by, let's see, 14 plus 14 plus 14, that is 28 with the 2, and then 46. 4600 more attack, if I'm doing my math right, which. I'm not entirely sure about that, so somebody please feel free to leave in the comments if I did that no, wrong or not. <laughs> so, you can potentially increase your monster's attack power by 4600. Uh, which is pretty, pretty good if you have all three. Now, would you drop all three for one monster? I don't know. <laughs> it really depends on what your opponent has and if they try to honest you or something, which uh, would really be bad. So. Yeah, Kalut, I like him a lot. There are a few times where you do have to summon him, which kind of sucks. It depends on your hand, but he's still a really good monster, and I like it a lot. Next, three, Blackwing Gale to win the Whirlwind. Probably one of the most well-known Blackwing monsters out there. This guy is arguably their best tuner. Whenever he is, uh, sorry, he has the same summoning conditions as Bora and Chris, where if you have a Blackwing out, you can just special summon him. And heck, if you have mu if you have multiples, you can do it all in one go. And that's why they tried to like limit what Chris can do, because all the old Blackwings don't have a limit to how many times you can summon them, which can get a little bit crazy with how this deck plays. Also, 
Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls half its attack and defense. That is a permanent cut, and it is really good, and it does stack if you have multiples of these guys out. Which is just really good. Now, sadly though, it targets, so you can't target a Dark Destroyer or a Forerunner or any of the other big, big ships in Cosmos. But, however, it's still a really good effect. It helps you get over really big things like, I don't know, a break sword of 3,000 attack power or just about anything really out there that the deck normally would have trouble getting over. And he's just a really good uh, level 3 tuner. Next up, I play 3 of the Blackwing Pinaki, the Waxing Moon. This guy, I would argue, is like the second best tuner in the deck. <laughs> so, whenever this guy is sent to the graveyard, during the end phase of that turn that he was sent to the graveyard, you can add one Blackwing monster from your deck to your hand except for himself. Now, he can he is a tuner, and he can only be used for the Synchro Summon of a Blackwing Synchro monster, which is kind of sucky, but however, he's still really good. I like this guy a lot. There's some combos you can do with him, and uh, the main spell card of the deck, Black Rollwind, uh, if I remember right, if that's what it's called, yeah, Black Rollwind. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is not wanting to come, like, work right now. So, Pinaki, he's a really good monster, really good tuner, just being able to search and everything. He's basically a Skarm, <laughs> which is something that is really cool. So, next up, I play three, Black Queen Blizzard, the Far North. I like this guy a lot, just letting you get for more synchro plays, you normal summon him. Whenever he's normal summoned, you target one Blackwing in your graveyard, special to summon it in defense. And it doesn't limit to like what you can summon. You can so long as it's level four or lower, you can summon it, which means you can summon out your Sura, your Gale, your Bora, your uh Kalu. You can go for anything from three, I mean you can go for any synchros from five to uh six with with just one card. Granted, though, uh, one thing that I do like doing is bringing back, like, a Panaki and then summoning out a Bora and going for a 7. It's pretty funny. So, yeah, I like the Blizzard a lot. He's better than what people think, which is why I like him at 3 instead of 2. Anyways, on to the cards that I play 2 of, and people are going to criticize me big time for playing this guy. <laughs> Assault Blackwing, Kunai to Drizzle. So, for those who don't know what this guy does, he's one of the newer ones out of Docs, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it says so right there. Uh, basically, this guy's a level 5, 2100, uh, non-tuner monster, but however, he become, but however, he can become a tuner. So, he has an effect where if you where you can uh, spell summon him from your hand by tributing off a Blackwing monster you control. And if you do that, he becomes a tuner. And once per turn, you can target one synchro monster you control and change its level from anywhere from 1 to, I believe, 8. Yeah, one to eight. So you can change the synchro to a one, an eight, a, a three, a four, five, six, seven. Doesn't matter what. You can change that synchro to anything, which I really like. And it just allows you to go into more combos and everything. Uh, one thing I like doing is like summoning him, targeting a uh, level seven, like I don't know, assault. Uh, sorry, uh, armor master. Turning him into a two to going for Hawk Joe and then using Hawk Joe's effect to bring back the Armor Master. It's a really good card and has some really good combos with the other Black Wings. That's why I like him. Alfred, I don't recommend playing more than two. <laughs> and then Alfred him one ofs. One Zephyros because his effect can only be used once per duel. Basically, if he's in your graveyard, you can bounce a face up card you control, special summon him, and then you take 400 damage. Not bad, not very great either. I'm honestly thinking of dropping him, but he helps out for some combos. One Blackwing Breeze the Zephyr. This guy, he's really nice. Basically, he can only be used for the Synchro Summon of a Blackwing Synchro Monster. If I, yep. And if he is added from your deck to your hand, you can special summon him. That means if he's drawn, if he, like, drawn uh, off of something other than your normal draw. I think he can even be summoned off of that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, let me double check on that. Okay, by the effect, okay, so yeah, he has to be drawn by like a card effect, or searched by a card effect, so like Black Rollwind or Panaki, you can just special summon him right then and there, and that's about it. He's a level 3 tuner, I like him a lot. Also, I got an ultimate rare version of him, and it looks pretty, uh, except it's not first set, that's my only gripe of it. <laughs> and then one Blackwing Gladius the Midnight Sun. Now, the reason why I'm playing Gladius is because there's a combo with him and Panaki. Uh, where's Panaki? Where if you normal summon Panaki and you have uh, Black Rollwind out, and you search out Gladius, you spell summon out Gladius because Gladius says if you control only one Blackwing monster, you can spell summon him from your hand 
and then you just go for a synchro summon. You go for one specific synchro, which is Nothung, and then you just go off from there. It's a really good combo, and I like it a lot. It doesn't happen all that often, because I honestly don't draw into Panaki very often, <laughs> which drives me nuts sometimes. But, however, it's a pretty good combo, and I like Gladius just a lot. He's a pretty decent monster. Not as good as he could have been if he just said if you control a Blackwing monster, but no, they had to put it as a one Blackwing monster. Now then, onto the spells. I honestly don't play very many spells. First and foremost, three Black Rowan. This card is the heart and soul of the deck in some cases, where basically every time you normal summon a Blackwing monster, you can add one Blackwing monster from your deck to your hand with attack less than that monster's attack power. So you normal summon Chris, you can add a, I don't know, a Bora, a Shura, whatever you want to add. Now, the nice little thing about this is that if you have multiples out, you get all their effects, and if you have multiple normal summons, you can get the effect multiple times in a turn. And that is just really, really good, and you can plus like crazy off of this card. The only issue I have with this card is that it's not searchable, and there's really no guarantee that you're going to get to it very fast. Me, personally, I don't see it very often, and it drives me nuts, because without Black Rowan, it's really hard to make up for those synchro plays that you're doing, and it's just like, where's my Black Rowan? <laughs> I don't see it very often, and I play all these cards to get to it very fast, and my other combo pieces. Next up, I play 3 of Sir Goblin. This is just simply to dig through the deck and get to your combo pieces faster. It essentially turns your car, your deck into like a 37 card deck, but I don't really agree with that too much. But besides what everybody says, I mean it kind of does, it kind of doesn't, but hey, oh well. You get to draw a card. Give your opponent a thousand life points, not bad. Next up, 2 Twin Twisters. This card is pretty decent in this deck. I used to be playing MSTs and then I dropped MST for just, uh, what was it called? Delta Crow, uh, Anti-Reverse, and then I was like, eh, let's try out Twin Twister again. And Twin Twister, it's, I, I ended up preferring this over Delta Crow because Delta Crow can only hit face downs, which generally speaking is the biggest threat to this deck because, oh god, if your opponent is able to stop your normal summon, you, your turn basically ends right there. Uh, there have been multiple cases where if my, where I normal summon a Shura, my opponent's like bottomless, and then I'm just like, and turn, because <laughs> the deck is so heavily reliant on its normal summon, where if your opponent stops that normal summon, you are screwed, <laughs> which is why you need back row destruction, and Twin Twister just covers that so much, and you can also pop your opponent's pendulum skills and stuff like that. Also, there's some combo plays with it in Blizzard, where if you discard like a level 4, you can pop your opponent's back run, and you can almost win Blizzard, you use Blizzard's effect, bring back that level 4, and go for a Synchro Summon. It is just a really nice card for the deck. I kind of wish that it also triggered Panaki, but Panaki has to be sent from the field, which is a bit annoying. Now, under the last spell, I play one other Darkness. <laughs> just more draw cards. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for the spells. Just for comparison, this is the amount of monsters I play, this is the amount of spells I play. <laughs> and we still got five traps. <laughs> five traps. <laughs> uh, three Riker Screed. So yeah, this card just, again, just simply to dig through your deck, get through your combo pieces faster. Uh, generally speaking, I don't like activating Reckless unless I have two or more with me. That way so I get like multiple draws and I don't have to suffer multiple repercussions. So, it's a really good card. You draw two right away, but you skip your next two draw phases. It basically it gives you your next two draw phases right then and there, and then you just skip them. Which, it's very, it's high risk versus high reward. Uh, sorry, it's high, it's high risk for high reward, where if you can get this card off, and you can get multiples off, you can go very, very ham and potentially win right then and there. But, if your opponent stops your plays, and they are able to get rid of your board, this, it's such a hindrance, because you can't draw, and you just end up kind of losing because you can't do anything, which is why it's such a high risk versus high reward card. So you gotta be really smart when you activate it. Personally, I don't usually activate it unless I have two or more uh, ready to go. So yeah, that's just my general thoughts on Record Screed. It helps the deck out a lot, don't get me wrong. And then finally, two cards I've been testing out lately is King's Consonance. This card came out in Premium Gold, uh, at first I thought about only really playing it in Red Dragon Archfiend, and then I realized, oh wait, I can play this in other Synchro decks. So, <clears throat> excuse me, basically what this card does is when your opponent declares a direct attack, negate the attack, and then you can banish uh, Synchro, sorry, you can banish one tuner and one non-tuner monster, 
or any number of non-tuner monsters from your graveyard to synchro summon one synchro monster from your extra deck that is level 8 or less. So you are, your opponent attacks you directly, you negate the attack, and then like let's say you banish a Panaki and a Bora, you can then go for any of your level 7s right then and there, preventing your opponent from attacking you again. I like that a lot. It helped. It has saved my butt so many times after my opponent has regekied my board and then tried to go for game. So it is just a really good card for the deck. I like it a lot and I honestly want to try it on some other synchro decks because <laughs> it helps so much. It just saves my butt almost all the time. Uh, there are times where your opponent's able to get over the synchro monster that you summon out, like obviously. I mean, if you're going against like Draco Palace, you're probably having this her out. Uh, in which case, they probably shuffle this card back into the deck. <laughs> it's a really nice card, though, and I like it a lot. So, yeah, five traps, I think like 10 spells, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> and then a crap ton of monsters. Again, just for comparison. Uh, whoops. Yeah, never mind. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'll do the extra deck. So. I play mostly Synchros and I play a few XCs. First and foremost, I play one Black Wing, Armed Wing. This guy, he's a Piercer, and whenever he attacks a defense plus some monster, he jumps up by 500. Next, I play two Nofung, the uh, Starlight. <laughs> Sorry, I never really say their full name, so it's kind of hard, and it's also kind of hard to read. So, Black Wing, Nofung, the Starlight. This guy is one of their best Synchros, and I only play two because I only have two, otherwise, I probably probably test out three. I would really consider testing out three. This guy, whenever he is special summoned, your opponent takes 800 damage and then one monster they control loses 800 attack. That 800 attack loss is not tar is not targeting. It does not target, which means you can target, well, you can have one of your opponents like Dark Destroyers or something lose 800 attack power. I gotta gotta avoid the word target there because it doesn't target. <laughs> Now, what really makes this guy shine is that once during each turn, you can normal summon or set one additional Blackwing monster in addition to your normal summon. That is really, really good and it combos so amazingly well with Black Rollwind. Like, holy crap, it is just so good and so amazing. I like this card a lot. <laughs> Next up, I play two Blackwing Armor Master. This guy used to be the, one of the best synchro on the deck, but, uh, Sadly, he's not anymore. Now, uh, granted, though, he's still really good. So, this guy cannot be destroyed in battle, and you take no damage from battles involving him. Kind of weird for a level 7 of 2500 attack, but there's a reason. Whenever this card battles an opponent's monster, you can put one wedge counter on that monster. During each player's turn, you can remove all wedge counters on your opponent's monsters on the field to have all of those monsters lose all of their attack and defense. That is a quick effect, and that is amazing. Your opponent can, like your opponent attacks you, okay, quick effect, remove your wedge counter that you had on it from last turn. Oh, hey, guess what? Your monster now drops to zero. <laughs> it is so good, and this guy is really good for getting, uh, for just being an out to the Cosmo big ships. I like him a lot, just being able to get rid of those uh, kind of pretty easily. You still have to run them over in battle, which can trigger their effects, of course, which is pretty annoying, but oh well. Next up, I play two Blackwing uh, Tamer. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't read it for a second there. Blackwing Tamer. Oh boy, Obsidian Hawk Joe. <laughs> uh, gold is not easy to read. So, Obsidian Hawk Joe, basically what this guy does is, first and foremost, he's a warrior instead of a winged beast, which there's a reason for. So, once per turn, you can target one level five or higher winged beast monster in your graveyard special summon it. Also, if this guy is targeted, by a card effect or for an attack, you can redirect the attack or the card effect to another Blackwing uh, monster you control. I like this guy a lot. He's really good just being able to get back your synchros, just being able to go for plays. He can grab back Kunai as well, which allows you to go for more synchro plays with him. And I just really like this guy a lot. He's really good, and if your opponent tries to attack him, you can just redirect the attack to your armor master. But you can only use each of those effects once per turn, so you can't keep protecting him by having your opponent attack your armor master instead, which is Pretty annoying, I'm gonna be honest. And then finally, the main star of the deck now, Black, uh, sorry, Assault Blackwing Rakiri to Rain Shower. This guy, he is the main star of the deck now, and he really, really shows it. So, whenever this guy is synchro summoned using a Blackwing monster, he becomes a tuner, which kind of is annoying, but oh well. <laughs> Once per turn, you can target up, you can target any number of cards your opponent controls equal to the number of other Blackwing monsters you control and destroy them. So, 
But let's say you summon out him, and then you have three black wings other than himself out on the field. So you have a total of four black wings. You can pop three cards your opponent controls. Just once per turn, every turn. You can just pop them, destroy them, goodbye, good riddance. That is amazing. And that if you have multiple of these guys out, you can continuously use their effects. Because it only counts themselves, at, sorry, it always says not to count themselves, but if you have other copies, it still counts those guys. So, like, let's say you have all three of these guys out, and well, it's doable. Let's say you have all three of these guys out, you can pop a total of six cards. Because you can use his effect, count for these two, pop two cards, you can use his effect, count for these two, pop two cards, you can use his effect, count these two, pop two, two cards. It is really insane. And I just absolutely love this guy a lot. He's amazing, really good, able to just wipe out your opponent's board very easily. And I just absolutely love that artwork, especially in Ultimate Rare. Look at that. Look how pretty. Sadly, I only got one. <laughs> oh, well. Now, on to the XCs. I don't play very many XCs, I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> First and foremost, I play two four tricks. I don't go into them very often, but when I do, it's usually because I want to get a Chris or a Shura or a Bora, something like that. Like, generally speaking, if I go into them, it's because I have a Chris and a, and a uh, Bora, and I already attacked with them, and then main phase two, I'll go into him, and then search out a Shura or something. He's pretty helpful for the deck for just getting for the level fours, but that's about it. If he could search out any of the Black Wings, that'd be really nice, but sadly, he cannot. And finally, I play one Abyss Dweller. One uh, Digesto Emerald, I almost called him a Golden Emerald. <laughs> one Digesto Emerald, uh, one Abyss Dweller, and then one Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer. So I play Abyss Dweller because there's a lot of engrave effects going around, you know, Phantom Knights, BA, stuff like that. Uh, Digesto Emeralds is simply to get back my stuff from my graveyard, my synchros primarily, and <laughs> my non synchros as well, of course. And in Castell for just general removal. I like this I like to set up a lot right here. It I might swap out a four strix for something else. I don't know. I'm really considering it. And that's the deck. Eh, guys. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Tell me you guys think about the deck. I love this deck a lot. I, I tried to explain some things, but my brain just does not want to work. <laughs> so guys. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys later. Peace out. And tell me what you guys think of the deck. What would you recommend? What would you recommend that I take out? What would you recommend that I put in? See you guys later. Have a great day.